everybody, this is Transcrafter, or uh, DJ Tonic, as you may know me from my previous account. This is a brand new tutorial series I'm making on how to create trance music using FL Studio. Um, in this tutorial series, I'll be going over a lot of the advanced intermediate skills that you just can't find easily on YouTube, and I'm going to make them easy for you to find. Uh, I'll put them on my channel. And ho hopefully, basically, by the end of this, uh, you guys will have an, an easier understanding of FL Studio, how it works, and how you can create good tunes with it. I just want to explain what is the series about uh, so you guys can get a good idea of what it is you're kind of watching right now. Um, basically, I'm going to make a trance song, a trance production, and uh, I'm just going to explain kind of what I'm doing as I'm doing it all throughout the entire series. And we'll all be doing the same project all throughout. And then by the end, when I've finished the project, uh, you guys will have hopefully gleaned some good information off of it and found it helpful to you. So and that's the point of the series and I think I'm gonna start this video off by just kinda of explaining what the different windows in the FL Studio interface are, uh, where they are, what you can do with them, how you can find them useful and uh, that's that's just what we'll kinda of do real quick. Okay so the first window we're gonna look at is the uh, step sequencer, that's this window right here that I'm, I'm holding. Um, this window is where you actually edit all your patterns for the most part um, and it's also where you keep all your your elements located uh, that are actually active in your project so uh, it would all get listed down here and you can organize them by category over here um, these right over here this is where you enter in like uh, like single hits so like if I have uh, a drum and I want to have it hit at a certain moment I'd put one of these in that would uh would do that. Uh, we have a volume control for each each element in there. We have a uh, panning control and a mute control. You can change the length of the entire pattern with this right here. Um, although I usually just keep it straight to the minimum. Um, and then you can change the velocity of the different notes that you have hitting. That's basically like how hard a note actually gets hit. So like if I wanted to have a, a like a kick drum. If I wanted to have it hit softly on one, I could lower the velocity on that and then have it hit again with a harder velocity. It would, it would hit more strongly then. Um, there's a play button built directly into it. There's also another play button built directly into the playlist. And I, I think there's one, yeah, there's one in the piano roll. Those are the other uh, ones we'll go over in a second. But um, personally, I feel that the space bar that's built into your keyboard is probably the best way to do things. Just uh, hit the space bar and it'll play. So, um, anyway, uh, that's that. Next is the piano roll. That's this window right here. Uh, the piano roll is where you edit all your MIDI information. So, like, if I have a, uh, a melody that I want to create, I would have created it in this window. Um, it has a piano featured on the left side, probably why they called it the piano roll. Um, you can uh, edit all the properties for a certain given note in the bottom half of the piano roll. Uh, top half is just where you what notes are playing basically, and how they when they play, how they play them uh, is down is, is um, how they play them is down at the bottom. So um, it has a bunch of tools that you can access up here. Uh, that's also in the playlist over here. I'll go over that in just a second. Um, and that that's basically like you. This is the pencil tool. Pencil tool you would use for like just drawing notes, deleting them. Uh, paint is the same thing, but it's more just like you can paint quite a few with one click, uh, whereas pencil is just one. Um, and there's a bunch of other tools, I'm not going to go too much into detail over it. You can control, and up here is actually the uh, transport controls. You can you can control the tempo over here and then there's uh, play, stop, and record buttons over there. Um, next is the, uh, the playlist, which is this window right here. Uh, playlist is divided into two, two halves, just like the piano roll is. Uh, the, the top half is where you put normally all your automation data uh, and a bunch of other things. It's basically all your excess. 
Um, I do things differently. I don't actually do it that way. I actually put everything in the top half. I don't put anything in the bottom half usually. I only use the bottom half to organize my uh, elements. I'll rename all the patterns and I'll call them a certain thing based on whatever they are. But I don't actually place them in the bottom half. I, that's just my style though. So if you don't want to follow that, that's fine. Um, and then you can edit all your patterns in the bottom half. And it, I think there's an unlimited number. There's an unlimited number of patterns you can have that goes on forever. I think I'm pretty sure. Uh, up here on the top half, it is limited, so it just gives you more, um, uh, just more room to, I guess, clean up. Um, I'm using the FL Studio Beta, so actually it gives me the option to resize tracks. You can resize tracks; it's pretty cool. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of different new features in the beta, but I, I'm not really going to go over to them too much because I mean it's going to get released anyway. This video will be up for a while, so. Um, and then finally, the last window we're going to go over, is, I think the last one anyway, this is the uh, mixer. And it's where you, this is probably the most difficult one you're going to learn, because it's, but once you learn it anyway, it's, uh, it's very, very useful. You're going to want to use it all the time once you learn it. Uh, you, you mix your tracks in here. You put all your elements to each track pretty much, and then uh, they all get mixed down to the master track. Each track has a... Uh, Eight effect slots. You can add effects onto your elements. So, like, if I wanted to put some echo onto a certain, uh, I don't, I wouldn't really call it echo. It's actually reverb or delay. But I mean, um, if you wanted to put like an echo type type of effect onto a uh, onto an element, a given element, then you could do that using the effect slots. Um, not just echoes either, but you could do um, EQing. You can do compression. You can do a uh, chorus effect, a flanger. All these different things are available through the effect slots. Uh, and there's a bunch of controls down here, but I don't think we really need to go over them too much. That's more for just miscellaneous. We'll kind of go over that later. Um, and I think that's it for the. That's pretty much all the main elements in the in FL Studio you'll ever. All the main windows you're going to go up to. There's also the browser over here, but that's pretty self-explanatory. You just browse for the files and you put them in FL Studio. That's it. So that was it for the windows, and I think we're going to move on to actually making a track now. So yeah. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to actually um, set our tempo for about 138 BPM. Trance goes between 133, I believe, and 138 BPM for at least this style of trance. We're kind of going for a progressive style here. Um, and uh, I'm going to go for a faster beat, so 138 seems about right. Um, so yeah, we're going to go with 138 BPM, and then we're going to stick in um, a kick. Uh, we're actually going to layer up our kick, so I'm going to grab kick out of here. Okay. And then maybe a kick over here. We're just going to kind of layer these up, because that's what I do anyway, is I'll, I'll actually have the same... I'll have it. I'll layer my kicks up because it gives it more of a, a unique sound, um, more full. Uh, you want to right-click on the uh, the instrument right there, and you want to click on fill each four steps. That's going to put a uh, kick on every four steps. It's going to put it right. That's going to lay out our fa uh, basically. It's going to lay out our foundation for our uh, trance beat because trance is based on a four by four beat. Um, we're going to have a kick here, probably have a, a clap here, a hi-hat in between, more than one hi-hat, plenty of hi-hats. Um, that's just how we'll do it. So once you have those on, it's probably not going to sound great at first. So what we got to do is we got to edit the uh, envelopes. And what we're going to do then is we're going to edit basically the, the volume of the sample over time. Um, and that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, we're going to edit the attack. So there is no attack. It's basically going to be set at zero. And what attack is is that's how long it takes for the uh, the sound to actually kick in. Uh, we're going to bring the sustain all the way to the bottom. We're going to bring the release down. Take off all the hold, and then uh, just give it just barely, like a just a tiny bit of uh, of a decay right there. And that's basically going to make it sound like uh, not really very much like a kick. Well. A very small kick, not much bass to it. And that's actually what we're looking for, uh, is because we're going to have more bass than the other one. We're going to layer them on top. So, and I think that 
should actually be a little bit further out. That sounds good enough. All right, good. Then what we're going to do is we're going to send them both to the first channel in our, our track in our mixer. And uh, the way that you do that is you go to the uh, instrument, you select it, this window pops up, which is where we just edited it. This is where we just were editing the envelopes for it. And um, uh, there's this little box over here labeled effects. And that's actually going to send the uh, signal or whatever for, for that particular element. It's going to send it to the number uh, track that you have selected. So right now we're selecting track one. It's going to send it to track one. So if I play this, we're going to see that it's going to play out of track one in our mixer. Um, so now what we're going to do. Now that we have that, we're going to actually compress our kick. Uh, and I actually don't use the Fruity Compressor, which is the one that comes with FL Studio. I use uh, an external compression uh, VST that I got on the internet. It's free. It's called Classic Compressor. I'm not sure if it's still available anymore. Uh, I got mine on CD. But um, what we want to do is we want to bring the threshold down just a little bit. And what that does is it, the threshold sets basically a, a, like a level anything above that level gets compressed anything below doesn't um, so we're gonna we're gonna set that level we're gonna add, I think we're gonna leave the ratio alone just a little bit probably bring it up a little bit um, we're gonna keep this as a, a soft uh, soft knee that basically is like um, uh, like how hard the compression actually hits so like if we want it to be hard, it's going to sound more like the compression comes in really fast. Uh, soft is going to keep it with a slow, gradual. As, but um, we also edit that with the attack and the release. Um, we're going to give it more release and more attack. And the reason we do that is so that the compression doesn't come in until after you've already heard the impact from the kick. We're only compressing the bottom end of the kick, which is like the, the sub part, and that, that comes later. So. Already, you can hear that that has a lot more attack, uh, or um, a lot more of a like that kick sounds like it's more attacking now. Um, although it obviously needs to get EQ'd, and it's peaking right now, which is basically where it goes over zero decibels. So what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna fix those problems real quick. I think I'm gonna EQ it first. So we're gonna add the EQ before compression. I never add EQ after compression. You always want to put it before. Uh, so the compressor actually. Uh, it doesn't kick in until after you've already edited around like the the frequencies that you want to boost or, or level out. So we're gonna bring up the um, the highs a little bit, give it more clarity. We're gonna boost again at about um, two kilohertz there, and that's gonna give it some more punch to the kick. And then we're gonna also boost at about 140, 150 hertz. Okay, um, I just realized that I only have like a minute left in this video before I reach the YouTube time limit, so I'm going to end this video here and we'll continue this in the next video. I'll actually explain all the things I was going to explain, so uh, just head over to the next video and you'll continue from there.